I'm Chef Carol, and this is my first sewing tutorial. Normally, I find tutorials for my patterns on YouTube. When I searched for Vogue R11843, I couldn't find any videos. This pattern offered several challenges for me. First, it is an advanced pattern. Second, it contained techniques I had never used. I believed I had to have this dress and decided to invite anyone else interested in making this dress to take the journey with me. I believe that failure is not an option. Let's get started. So today we're starting on page three. But let's just review what I've done. All of my pleats are in. I cleaned up a lot of my uh, seams with uh, pinking shears. And today you may have already done the stay stitching on piece number four and also have sewn together the center of piece number four. It says here stay stitch side edges of front lining between the notches and apply side front facing to side front lining and then ease stitch curved edge of side front from upper edge to notch. So that's what we've done here. The next thing is to take piece number five and pin front lining to side front lining. But first we're putting the uh, interfacing piece number eight. This is piece number eight. So I'm going to be putting the interfacing, apply side front interfacing to side front lining. Side front interfacing to side front lining. Once I do that, I'm going to pin front lining to side front lining, which would then be taking piece number four and connecting it to piece number five. And there's that ease that we're going to be doing between the bus line. So what you should be doing by now at this point is putting piece number eight to piece number five. And then we're going to take these two pieces and attach them to the front side lining on both sides. See you back here. We completed 17 and 18. So you should have the front lining sewn together with the interfacing. And next, we're going to work on pieces nine and seven. This is piece nine. This is piece seven. You're going to attach those. I used an iron on. And then you're just going to sew those pieces together. And then we'll sew the two pieces at the side. So when we come back, you should have finished 20 stitch back lining to side back lining, matching the notches, stitch front to back lining together at the sides. After that, we're gonna start on the petticoat. So let's get through the top lining. At this stage of the project, step number 21 should have been completed. So basically that is taking the lining, which has already been interfaced. And what I'm going to do next is take piece number 10 and I'm going to create the side seam. And then piece 11, which is actually three pieces. I cut two on the fold. So piece 11 is two pieces cut on the fold. And those two pieces will be joined to piece number 10. So we're here. Here we are, item 22, stitch center back of the petticoat front and back, and then gather upper edge of petticoat between notches. So I have tried out my serger on this fabric. What I'm going to do is do my gathering using my serger. And after that, I'm going to go to piece 11, which was two pieces cut on the fold, join those two pieces at the seam, and then gather the upper edge of that ruffle. And then I'll come back just before we attach the ruffle to the upper edge of the petticoat. At this point, I have gathered the piece number 10, which will attach to the waistline of the lined bodice top. And this is piece 11, which gets attached to the bottom. So you can kind of see that it has the skirt effect going here. What I'm going to do is 
pull some of these strings and get all the gathers so that they fit the bottom of the top petticoat. You may need to use the method where you run two strings, a uh, top and a bottom within the seam allowance, and then pull those to make the gathers. Whatever method you choose, whether you have a serger which can gather, or if you use the two string method. After you do that, then you'll attach that piece number 10 to piece number 11 by making sure that the gathers fit the bottom of piece 10. Let's do that and we'll be right back. At this point, I am at step number 24, pin petticoat ruffle to lower edge of petticoat, matching seams to dots, adjust the gathers, stitch and press the seam up. I have clipped the bottom ruffle to the top ruffle and my next step is going to be to serge this and then I'm going to attach the top bodice to the to the ruffled bottom. I will go from 24 to 25 pin petticoat to lower edge of lining. This is my lining. Matching center fronts and center back, adjust the gathers and uh, press under shoulder edges of lining. With right sides together, pin the lining to the dress. So I'm going to complete step number 25, and then I'm going to move on to pinning the two fronts of the dress, the front of the dress to the front of the lining. So it says here on 26, with right sides together, pin lining to dress, stitch front neck, back neck, and armhole edges together, breaking stitching at large dot, and cut the curves. When we come back, we'll be under stitching the lining as far as we can go before we move on to attaching the shoulder. At this point, I have connected the top and bottom petticoat and I have basted the petticoat to the bodice. I want to make sure that fits right before I sew it. So basically, this is what the petticoat looks like and this is the petticoat attached to the bodice. I will take it and try it on over the dress and if everything is good then I'll combine the pieces together and that will bring us to step number 26. So what I'm showing here actually completes 25. Pin petticoat to lower edge of lining, matching center fronts and back edges, adjust the gathers, I uh, haven't pressed the seam yet because I haven't sewn it. I just want to be sure. And then I'll move on to step number 26. Press under shoulder edges of lining with right sides together, pin lining to dress, then stitch the front neck, back neck, and armhole edges together, breaking stitching at large dots. Clip the curves. It's about to get very serious here. I have my dress on my dress form because it's getting to be quite cumbersome on the table. At this point, I have sewn the bodice onto the uh, ruffled bottom, and I have clipped the arms, the front and the back to with right sides touching. What I'm going to do is what I've been doing, and that is I will base this together first and make sure that it's exactly as it should be. Then I will sew the areas where I have the clips and uh, we will be on number 26 and it says press under shoulder edges of lining with right sides together, pin lining to dress. Stitch front neck back neck and armhole edges together, breaking stitching at large dot, clip the curves. Additionally, I will have to understitch the lining as far as possible and then turn the lining to the inside and press. When I come back, this dress will be inside out. The shoulders will still be open and I will move on from there. At this point, I am up to step number 28. Everything has been understitched as far as I could on the lining. 28 says pin front to back at shoulders and stitch keeping pressed edges of facing free. What I'm going to do is go ahead and press the armhole and the front bodice and open up the top edges so that they can be 29 says slip stitch pressed 
under edges of facing together. After I have stitched the front and the back at the shoulders, once I turn it over, I will slip stitch the lining and uh, that's 29 and 30, which is going to be a kind of a long job. It says turn under back opening edges to clear zip of teeth. And then I will have to slip stitch on both sides the zipper tape. After that, I will do 31, which is sew the hook and eye to the back opening just above the zipper. And to ensure that the bra straps do not come away from the shoulders, I will create what number 32 is calling a lingerie strap by creating a three quarter length thread chain. Then I'll attach it to the snaps. So I'll come back after all of that. To start working on the shoulder, I put the two open shoulder pieces together, sew to five eighth inch hem. I first tried it on just to make sure the armholes fit properly. The next step here is to bring this together. like this. I'm going to clean these sides up. On the reverse side, this will now be closed. This will be together and slip stitched together. And then across here would go the thread with the snap for the uh, lingerie strap. At this point, I have completed steps 28, 29, and 30. Here is my shoulder seams and I've slip stitched the zipper lining to the zipper. And the next step in this dress is going to be number 33. It says with right size together, pinned ends of binding 12 together matching notches. I am now on step number 33. And to complete this step, I'm going to cut this piece from a strip, even though it should be on an angle, I don't have too much more material, so I'm going to just do it this way. Once I cut this, I'm going to use tracing paper so I'll know where the cutting lines are. And you can see cutting lines here on the pattern. What I'm going to do so I'll know where they are is take the tracing paper. I still have one more to cut up there. So I'm going to take the tracing wheel and go over these lines. You may not be able to see it, but there are some green lines on there. I'm going to finish cutting this out. I'm going to use the tracing paper to trace all the way to the end. Then I'm going to match these two notches and sew a quarter of an inch seam on the machine. And then I'll meet you back here. Okay, so step 33. With right sides together, pin the end of bindings. I've matched the notches. You may not be able to see that there and there. So I've matched the notches. Starting at one extending in, Cut along cutting lines, forming one continuous bias tape as shown. I can see the cutting lines. So I'm going to start here. And I'm just cutting along the lines as directed. I have created one continuous strip. 
That's step number 34. And step number 35 says, with wrong sides together, fold bias strip in half lengthwise, press lightly, pin raw edges together, trim the ends as shown. With wrong sides together, I'm gonna start here. Just gonna fold that in half and I'm going to pin it all the way to the end. Then I'm going to press it. And once we get to the end, say for instance, this would be one of the ends. Once we get to the end in step 35, it is telling us to cut this end off and, and just square that off. So let's get that done. And don't forget to press it. At this point, I have turned the hem up the three and a quarter inches. I have it pinned. I have pressed the hem. And the next thing I'll be doing is basting close to the turned edge at the bottom of the hem. At this point, I have completed 37. I've taken the hem and I've basted the folded edge. And then I've taken the bias strip that we completed in step number 34 and 35. I flipped the dress over to the right side and I've pinned that bias strip to the bottom. So now what I'm going to do is just sew it across all the way to the end. And if you notice, they tell you to have an edge here and then we will slip stitch that edge at the end. So there we go, this part here, 37, that's this step right here. And once that's completed, I'm going to move on to step number 38. The finish is in sight. So we are now up to 38. I have completed putting the lap binding, sewed it on, slip stitch the edge. The next thing to do after you iron this down is to stitch in the ditch. And then after that, you'll just turn that up and put the hem in. I'm guessing that this binding is just to put a little extra weight on the hem. So the one thing that was skipped over, and I purposely skipped it over because I wanted to be sure, it says on the ruffle, you might want to just put a rolled hem on that edge, making sure that it's not coming below the dress. That's what's left for me to do. I have now completed this dress. Step number 38 turn binding to inside. So here's the binding, turn it to the inside, sew the hem in place. I use the uh, machine to do the hem and then press it. What I've observed with this binding in the hem is that it actually helps the dress to hold its flared shape at the bottom. I was wondering why did it need to be there? So now additionally, I also took care of the hem on the, I just surged it. So this is the ruffle on the inside of the dress. It was actually two dresses in one. It has been quite a project. And right now I'm looking forward to just trying it on.